Welcome back everyone and if you're watching one of our videos for the first time, hello! Today's activity is going to be a wee bit more challenging and we must stress straight from the start that if you're going to take part that it must be under the direct supervision of an adult as it involves working with a water source. Hi everyone, that's right, safety is paramount here. We call this activity pond dipping and honestly it can be done in any shallow river or stream and even the rock pools along the beach. All you're going to need for this activity is a small fishing net, a clear tub so you can view what you catch, and your wellies. Now, when you're planning on going pond dipping, you want to keep a few things in mind. Once again, safety is paramount, so you want to make sure that the area you're going to is nice and accessible. If you're at a pond like this, you don't want steep banks or you don't want slippy banks. You don't want to be high up above the water. You want to be nice and close as possible to the water's edge, just like this. Also, if you're planning on going to a river or a stream, make sure that the water isn't flowing too fast. I've picked a small pond here in Balak where I know I can get in and out using my wellies without getting my feet wet. Now what we're aiming to do when we go pond dipping is to try and catch as many wee beasties as possible. The more you catch, the better. We're looking to get an idea of two things. One is how many different types of beastie that we find and how many of each that we catch as well. The more bugs and the more variety of things you find, the healthier the water is. So stand by and let us show you how it's done. First things first, fill up your viewing tank with water. Be careful though, as sometimes the tub could be a bit heavy. If you don't feel good filling up the tub, you can also use a smaller, lighter container to fill up the bigger one with. Now, the majority of invertebrate life in a pond likes to live amongst the plant life and under the rocks. It's too risky for them to be out in the open waters where a predator might get them. So, that's where we're going to focus our search. Using your net, you want to disrupt the plant life in your water. Not so much that you damage the plant, but enough to shake the animals off and into your net. Or, if you're in a stream like Jenny is, it's best to disrupt the stones upstream of you and allow the flow of the water to push the animals into your net for you. When you're searching in your water, don't be afraid to move to another area, as what you might find is that different things like to live in different places. After every attempt you make to catch something, have a look inside your net and look closely for any movement. If you see something, gently pick it up and put it inside your tank. Once you feel you have caught enough, it's time for the best bit, viewing your catch. In this clip you can see how many different things we've caught. At any one time there are up to 8 different things moving around in there. The fish you can see is called a stickleback and the bigger faster swimming bugs are called water boatmen. We also have alderfly larvae, water slaters, water shrimp, damselfly larvae and many more. Not content with viewing the beasties from the outside, we decided to take a dive in with them to get a closer look at their world. It's a good idea to take pictures of what you have caught, that way you can identify them from the comfort of your own home. Once you're finished observing all the animals that you've caught, it's time to safely return them to your home. Be very careful doing this as the water can be a little bit heavy and if you need to do it in little bits, that's fine. Just make sure you're as gentle as possible with the animals as you return them. So what 
do you guys think? Are the places Craig and I visited healthy or not? We love this activity for several reasons as it gets everyone out and about working together. It also helps people understand just how much is going on underneath the water surface. And it helps us understand if the water in our green spaces is healthy or not. And if it's not, what we can do to start making it healthy again. We're going to leave some links in the description below to help you out. One of the links will help you identify all the animals that you found within your water source and one of the other links is going to help you learn how to create your own scientific survey which can be sent back to the scientists at Opal to help them understand just how healthy Britain's waterways are. Once again guys we would love to see how you get on with this activity. If you do decide to give it a go then you can tag us on Instagram hashtag TullicanFun or get in touch and comment on our Facebook page. If you'd like to see more videos from Tullican, then all you have to do is click the subscribe button and hit that bell icon and you will be notified as soon as any of our videos go live. Thanks again for watching everyone. We hope you had as much fun watching this video as we did making it. Bye!